Uh, the last person connected. Okay, awesome. Let's call this meeting to order, please. Uh, I'd like to have a moment of silence. Flag salute, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which, which it stands, stands one nation, one nation under God, God, invisible, with liberty, liberty justice, justice for all. May we have the reading of statement of adequate notice, please? Public notes of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act has been given as follows. By advertising the Burlington County Times and the Courier Post on July 28, 2021, posting notice on school boards and boards and main entrances on July 28, 2021, posting this electronic on the district website on September 1, 2021, and by following written notice of the group of Delanco Township on July 28, 2021. Thank you. Public comment on agenda items. I'll, I'll first preface this by saying we did not receive anything on the online form. If there's anybody that is present today that would like to speak on an agenda item, please speak now. Attendance, attendance real quick. Oh, sh yeah, we didn't do roll call. <laughs> oh my goodness, I skipped right over. That's my mistake, roll call, please. Uh, Mr. Calabar. I am here. Ms. Darmo. Mr. Bobby. Mr. Doby? Yeah. Mr. Cameron Jenkins? He's on. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Here. Ms. Kevin Eugene? Here. Mr. Lubeck? Mr. Lubeck? I know he's here. He mouthed here. Yeah, okay. Mr. McLaughlin? Here. And Ms. Joseph Chiquilli? Here. Right corner. Thank you. Oh, wait, I'm um, sorry. Just real quick. Vera meant, just messaged me that she's on the iPad. I don't know. She doesn't say Vera's name and she can't talk or something. So anyway, just wanted to let you know. <laughs> okay. Perhaps it's, um. Can she use the comment and the, um. Yeah. And then that we can find her. She said she's she's Foo's iPad. Yeah, I was gonna say it says Foo's iPad. Yeah. Okay. That's her, her husband. Yes. Okay. Great. Great. So is here. Wonderful. Public comment on agenda items. Again, nobody commented on the online on the online form. But if anybody would like to speak on an agenda item at this time, please. This is your moment. Okay, I don't see any comments at this time, so I will close the public comment portion and we will go into the work session agenda. And we will start off with the presentation, the finance presentation exhibit B. Thank you, excuse me one second to uh, share. I am sharing through uh, a PDF, just so everyone knows, just because it's having an issue with my VPN. Can you see that? No. 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 Uh, Can you see that now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm trying to keep everyone up to date with what's going on financially since obviously we are, you know, we had a couple of agencies in the last year and I want to make sure everyone's clear on what's going on this year and just, just keep everyone up, up, to, up to par with everything. So a couple quick slides. Um, the first one is just an updated tuition cost. As I mentioned, this moves quite a bit at the right now because the contracts are still coming in and so forth. Nevertheless, these are the updated forecasted numbers. Uh, the one question you always get, get from Mr. Phil Jenkins is, is everything budgeted? It's hard to tell with tuitions because sometimes you gain a little bit when something doesn't happen in the budget that you expected, and other times you gain someone or you have someone move in or whatever who then goes out of district. So it's hard to tell exactly what is and what is not budget. So I'm focusing more on how we're doing, basically. 
So this is the updated figures. I, we're actually in a little better shape than that. We're in better shape than last time. But I want to point your, 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 your eyes down to the very last spot there. There's still five pending IEP and placement evaluations. So if everything keeps going as forecasted right now, we would see about 200,000 right now breakage in our favor. But again, we still have five people that are outstanding, which could easily swing in the other direction. The other thing I wanted you to notice is we're still missing three contracts for public schools for special ed students. And we're also missing two contracts for private schools. So those numbers are still pretty, we think we have an idea of based on last year's numbers, but they may be a little bit off. The other thing is we haven't received our first bill from Riverside. So Riverside bills us monthly. So we're forecasting what that tuition would be. Oh, after we see the first bill, we'll get a better sense of what that actually will be for the year. So hopefully by the end of next month for the October meeting, I'll have a better sense of the Riverside bill, which obviously is a really big portion of our tuition expenses because of the high school. So overall, I would say it's better than last month. Um, well, I think last month it, we were on the, you know, I, I haven't looked back at it, but we definitely were in, we were in plus 200,000. So we'll see what happens with the five pending. But overall, this is a better forecast of where, of where we were the previous month before. I, I wanted to, to mention this to everyone because if you've been watching the news, you realize there's, there's a massive school bus driver shortage, not just in New Jersey, but the entire nation. And it's causing significant issues with transportation. Right now, we have a few students that we are struggling. We put out phone calls, emails, et cetera. The vendors, maybe districts, and we can't find them. We can't find anyone to even quote to transportation. Uh, we had one person quote, but the quote <laughs> was about $30,000, $35,000 for, for one student. That's above the bid threshold. The transportation bid threshold is 20200 It is not the normal bid threshold. It's a different bid threshold. So for that reason, we are, as we're continuing to try to get quotes to, see, to get transportation for these students, in terms of problem solving, on the agenda for next week is to procure, basically solicit bids in case we can get any of these other routes done through a bid. So I just wanted to kind of mention that to you. These are going to be high cost because you're talking one student per route. So imagine if you do a route to, when well, most time does a route to Riverside, that might cost $30,000, but you need 40 students on it. So realize it's probably going to be significant expenses if someone does bid, but we have to provide transportation. So we have no, no choice at this point. Um, just want to keep everyone abreast of the timeline on the bottom of what I'm kind of going to, you know, basically it's going to be following. We'll advertise the meeting for next board meeting. I'll set things on October 6th to put them on the board agenda for October 20th. And on October 21st, I'll send it to the county for approval. The county must approve all transportation contracts. The next thing, I just want to keep everyone up to, up, up to speed on the budget process. I know it seems like May is a far distance away. I'm starting on the budget now. Uh, for two reasons. One, I normally start a little bit in September, then really get dirty with it in October, November. This year, I'm starting even earlier because of the budget issues from last year. As mentioned in the preview in August, I'm worried about the fund balance. So what I would like to do is, for, is kind of forecast and see how this plays out, not just for next year, but for 23-24. Because remember, as I mentioned at the, last, at the last meeting, the fund balance from one year, you see it two years from then. So meaning the fund balance from this year, you'll see in 23, 24. So I'm trying to see what that could look like to try to stabilize where the budget was at. So we can try you know, to, avoid, to avoid budget cuts or so, or so forth. With that being said, I want to do this budget, or not do it, but get a preliminary idea of where the budget's at because when the ARP grant is due in November, I want to see if I can make that work in a way where that where we could kind of swivel that fund balance in a way to make it even over two years. I'm not sure if there's an answer to that, but I'm, I want to look at that and see if I could do that. 
to try to protect the budget in 23-24. So it's kind of interesting. I'm talking about, I'm in reality, I'm putting the budget for 22-23, but I'm also preparing for 23-24 to try to make sure that we keep that fund balance, I want to try to keep that fund balance level, or else we're going to see another big dip. If you remember the presentation, we had these fund balances that are over a million, a million two, and we dipped down to 400,000 this year. And that's, what that, that's the budget cuts. So I'm gonna see if we can try and somehow even that out using these federal funds. Don't know if I'll succeed, but that's my goal. And that's why I'm starting early. At the next meeting, you know, I'll have the budget calendar for you. I'll be well drafted. So I'll have a calendar for you. you know, I'll be able to also in November start giving you projected revenues and things about nature so we start discussing it in the public forum. And right now I'm working on the personnel costs and the district tuition costs to get an idea of what that would look like. So I'm, just, I'm working with the major expenses right now. Um, and the last piece of data, I, I, the last piece of things on the presentation I just want to share with you. There's some adjustments that I'm making that maybe you won't notice, but I want you to know about. The board secretary report is one of them. There's a thing called GASB 84. It's, it's basically what GASB 84 is going to, it's, not, it's going to change the way we do some accounting. I'm trying to get ahead of it. And so if you look at your board secretary report for next month or for next week, for the month of July, it has two new funds on it. It has fund 28 and fund 29. That's student activities and scholarship. There's not much activity there, but I'm trying to get ahead of it so that we're prepared for any changes that we may have to make. So you're going to see two extra funds. So when you compare the treasury reports, you now see the whole top part. I also put student activities and scholarship on there as well. So you're seeing the whole, you're seeing all of that on the board secretary board, which is not something which you were able to, which we never keep those of doing before. You know, the changes that I've made over the last month that most people would not realize, but I'm trying to prepare for the future a little bit. I'm also hoping to expand even further, but my first goal is getting fun 10, 20s, 30s and 40s all lined and all perfect for you guys. So I just wanted to mention that, so in case someone noticed that, I look at the board secretary report. Other than that, that was it for tonight. If you have any questions. Thank you. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay. Does anybody have any questions in regards to the finance presentation? Um, I have a question. Um, I know on Delanco.com, there's a space at the bottom of the homepage, which says um, RFPs, request for a proposal, I think, and yep. bids. So will these bids be um, up on our public website? I will put the advertisement up. I cannot put the actual bid itself up because it's confidential data regarding addresses. Okay, so, so you, you are going to put those advertisements up? Oh, absolutely. I, absolutely. I really have to, yes. And so what I'll do, normally I would put the bid right up there. Uh, maybe that's what I would do. Or maybe not RP, I would just put it right up there. So I would just grab it. But with this bid, because they are special education routes, they have people's personal addresses. So therefore, I can't just put that up. And I can't put the actual document up on the website. What I'll do is on the advertisement say, please contact me for a copy of the bid. And that way, I'll provide it that way, confidentially. Okay. And uh, another question is, um, I, I believe, don't we um, also go out for bids on, on other professional contracts in the fall sometimes? I was never on the finance committee, so I'm not sure how that works. But um, let's say for the auditor or the, um, the lawyer. Normal RFPs will be done, normal RFPs will be done probably in the springtime. April ish. That's usually when I do them for the next year. So you can do them for the following year. October, November. I, I've never seen them done. I mean, you can do them whenever you want, but uh, usually you do them for the following years because the contracts were already awarded for, for this year. Yeah, they were awarded from January and they go all the way until the end of the year, right? Okay, so you're going to be doing new bids in the springtime? Yeah, so I do for the next fiscal year. And can and can you tell me what professional contracts you would be going out for bid? I have to. I not have not at this time, and I, I haven't prepared for that. But uh, I mean, it depends on 
what professional services we're using. I mean, for you mentioned solicitor, you mentioned auditor, we could do those two. Um, theoretically, since you don't go above the big threshold, you don't technically have to, I could just solicit quotes, but I prefer the RFP. I prefer, I prefer the RFP. Um, so, but in other districts, I mean, if I looked at what I've done previously, I would, I would opt for nursing services, OTP, uh, auditor, solicitor, um, school physician. We knew it was school physician. I mean, I've been for school physician before. Um, I, I, I've gone out for, I have to look it up. I know I have all my previous documents, but uh, I've gone out for several services. So will, will the board be in on that process? I mean, I've never been in on that process before. Is that, maybe that was handled by the finance committee. Yeah, for example, for example, it depends on what the board wants, but um, let's pretend the board, I'll give, you, I'll give you a one case scenario. One time we went for RFP for a special counsel and we're going to do the board, board related item. So ultimately what happened was we did have a board member complete the rubric as well. It's not going it's not going to have a full board. You can do interviews with the board for certain services. Um, of course, that takes a lot more time. Uh, normally, to be very honest, the RFPs are coming pretty similar. So I've been really, I, I've been interviews a couple of times, depending on what they were looking for. So, for example, if you want to see if you're serious about looking at a different solicitor, then maybe it's worth getting a panel on the board to interview them. Um, um, can, you know, can you hear my voice? Okay, because you're. I'm using a new device today, so I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I mean, are I, you hearing me okay? Because you're a little bit like staticky for me. It might be my device. It might be my device. So, but you hear me okay, you're saying? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, okay, so that was basically my question. So you don't have to spend too long on that. Yeah, just a summary. Again, yeah, it depends on what the board would love to do, basically. Um, uh, I know most RPs the board is not involved in, like for like team, 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 things of that nature. But if you want to, if you want to get a board solicitor, for example, since they represent the board, that's something that maybe you would want to be. Or if you're thinking about changing architects and you're looking for a bond referendum, there might be a reason for the board to be involved in an interview. I think that would be if there was a serious concern of who we have, um, and that's and the board wanted to be involved. But I would, I would trust doing a panel of two or three board members. I, I've never done a full board interview for anything. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. We will now start the discussion on the draft agenda for the September 15th, 2021 meeting, Exhibit C. Does anybody have any questions in regards to the approval of the minutes of August 11th, 2021? Nobody has any questions that they feel the need to have answered. All right. Does anybody have any questions in regards to the reports of the board secretary and treasurer for July, 2021? Exhibit F. Um, I, I have something I would really like to get to know all of these different terms and um, really understand this a lot deeper, but I think it would take more time than the board would want to spend. So um, I don't know if this is allowed or not, but I want to know if Mr. Burns and I could have like um, a one on one video meeting just so I could ask him like really thoroughly some questions and not take up the board's time. I don't, maybe that's not allowed because you would have to pay him overtime. I don't know, but. Can you do it in writing? Like you mean email him questions? Yeah. Yes. I just think it would be faster if, if, um, I mean, I think it would go faster just like if, if I'm a teacher and I'm teaching somebody, I just like, if they quickly ask me what they don't understand, it just flows faster that way. You're on mute, Steve. 
I mean, if it's going to cost a lot of money because of overtime and stuff like that, I'll, I'll have to maybe find somebody else. So I don't want to cost the district more money for that. You know what I'm saying? I think in regards to what, what, what Bob said, if you could put it away and then maybe I'll just call you, um, I think that would be probably more efficient. I mean, I don't know if I'm talking you through it. Uh, I don't know if I'm talking about it, but it would never give you these targeted ideas of what we're going to talk about. Oh, okay. All right. I'll so you you I have no problem talking to you. Um, but and I would say it depends on time to time of the month for me. So, for example, I'm getting ready for the audit. So right now I'm kind of bogged down with a few things. So I may, so if you can give some time, I mean, if we can do this in a month, I won't forget. I mean, put it on the calendar now. Um, okay, that would be great. That, that's, and then, that's why I, I decided to plan it out. If we're going to do it a month, is very stressful for me in terms of reconciliation. So, so depending okay, on okay, time. Okay, no problem. Maybe, and in the meantime, yeah. I'll try to educate myself and find some other people. I'm trying to get more of a background because I'm I'm like a complete novice at this. Do you know what I mean? So well, I'm I have no problem. Time. Let's do it that way. If you can just put some some questions and then we'll do it the second time. And I, I look at the, I look at my calendar because a lot of reports you do in October as well. But we'll, the next we'll, just give me just there's only allowed to do it tomorrow. If if I have a timeline, we'll do it by the end of first or whatever. Yeah, I have no problem with it. Okay, very good. Thank you. And then, Vera, when you send that email, be sure to have myself and uh, Mr. Mercer on the email as well, please. Okay, very good. Awesome. Thank you. Do we have any questions in regards to the final board secretary report for June of 2021, Exhibit G? All right. Do we have any questions? about the community liaison reports that may be brought up during the meeting. I know that we have no clue what they're going to even say, so I would assume not, but in the event that uh, somebody had some intel that they wanted to, to bring up. All right. Obviously, I'll say my message when that time is brought about, and there'll be no student recognition, so that's not something we need to go into depth about. Public comment. In regards to this agenda, is there anything that you feel as though you want to discuss about, excuse me, discuss specifically about the agenda? Agenda, I don't think, like, we can talk about it once we go through it. So I think we can move forward. Does anybody have any questions in regard to Mr. Mersinger's superintendent's report? Okay. I, I do have one comment Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. since we're on the superintendent's report of that meeting i didn't really want to wait until september 15th to just take a moment to thank the teachers and all the staff members for an excellent job starting up the school year we had an in-service day on september 1st we had the first day of school for students on september 2nd so i really appreciate what the teachers and other staff members did to be ready for the opening of school on september 2nd uh, as of August 25th, our buildings were ready. So thank you very much to our custodial team for having the buildings ready for our teachers to come in and set up classrooms. So a lot of people just working very diligently to get prepared for the, the school year. And so now, uh, as of today, today was the fourth day of school for students. And so I feel like uh, our, our teachers are doing a fantastic job. Other staff members are working diligently. And at the same time, you know, we're still getting our bearings because it's been a year and a half since we've had a full day of school for students every day. So um, there's definitely some adjustment for the families, the parents and students, as well as staff members. And so I want to also thank the students themselves and, and their moms and dads, aunts and uncles, grandparents, everyone in their lives for being flexible and understanding about the the very uh, kind of hectic and, and sometimes disjointed nature of what's happening over the past week or so, because it's kind of new for a lot of people. We have kids in the building now that uh, some of them were not in the building at all last year, uh, and some were not in the building at all for about a year and a half. So it's uh, definitely an adjustment. So either way, once again, thank you very much to our awesome staff members for everything that they've done to get prepared for the school year, and it's underway. So thank you. 
I do have a question. I just uh, thought of something on the letter G, the safe return plan. Um, and I did, I did look over the uh, COVID cheat sheet thingy that is on our Delanca.com site. Um, if a student is showing symptoms, where are they? Are they just going to wait in the nurse's office, or how is that being dealt with? We have an isolation room. Uh, we have one at each building. Okay. All right. That was just my question. Thanks. Any other questions? All right. Do we have any questions in regards to the instruction and program aspect of the agenda, the confidential exhibit M? Obviously, what we could discuss of that. Okay. Budget and finance. Do we have anything to discuss at length or in short in regards to the budget and finance portion of the agenda? Letters A through S. Um, uh, I have a question on uh, letter A, exhibit N. And I just saw this today when I was going through. I know I already submitted my questions ahead of time. So if there's not an answer tonight, it's okay. Um, I could get it in the following days. I was wondering what the, um, there's a bill for temp troll for 20, around 21,000. Um, I'm going to assume that has something to do with HVAC, but you don't have to answer that today unless you have that offhand. I believe it was. I, I, no, actually, no, it's not. It is the cafeteria. It was the um, refrigerator and freezer. Uh, basically, we replace using the cafeteria funds, not the general fund, the uh, refrigerator and freezer. So those sort of purchases, they're not, um, we don't go into that detail and these kind of lists. It's just the general payment to Temptral. It's not listed as refrigerator no. and cost. No, it's just, it's just a purchase order. Okay, thanks. And um, I'm looking at letter B, necessary line item transfers. Um, could you talk about those transfers? That means we had to take money out of, for one, one use and switch it to another use, correct? I'm looking at letter B. Exactly. So why did, can you tell me about that a little bit? Like what was, what do we need money for? Uh, I, I had to look at the transfer. I had to look in detail at the transfers. Okay. I that's, that's okay. I, I'm going to, um, I can follow up with that later. And I just know in my finance training, I, is it true, Mr. Burns, that any line item transfers, you need two thirds um, of the board to vote for that? That would be six votes. Is that correct? Well, I can take my little cheat sheet here. I think, I think that's I what I'm saying. Yeah. In my training, not that like <laughs> that would happen, but. Yeah, I have to check. I always have my cheat sheet here for those cases. Um, so I have to look it up. Okay, yeah. that's okay. I'm pretty that's all right. We don't, we don't have to spend time on that. Because I, I do have a lot of things that just if you happen to know it offhand, you could just tell me. Ms. So Donna, for letters. Correct. It's correct. Oh. It's two thirds. Uh, various items require an affirmative vote of two thirds of the uh, members of the board transferring uh, among light, line items is one of them. And, and here's why I know this because Stephen Burns and I were discussing it uh, recently in that kind of a list. So, Steve, I found it before you did. There you go. And so, why we have so, in a board of nine, that means six members. Yes. I believe, if my math is correct. And then that letter C. Okay, letter C, monthly line account certification. I don't even know what that means. Like... This is what I was talking about before that I really don't know a lot. So if, if it's something simple to explain, I would appreciate if you could do it now. And if it's not a simple thing. It means the line is below zero. Say it again. It means no line is below zero. That's, that's basically the transfers are made so that no line is below zero. Okay. Nothing below zero. Okay, no line below zero. Okay. Um, all right, the letter E, it says DCF, Office of Education. What is DCF on letter E? 
Division of Child of Children and Families. We should have a buzzer, Steve. Me, it, it should be you, me, and now. Kidding. Division Department of Children, Children and, Families, and Families, which they are the, the governing body over uh, DCP and P, child protection okay. and permanent. Okay, I gotcha. Um, okay, now to letter G. There's an, a one on one aid in letter G. It's a um, Okay, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and the cost of a one-to-one -one aid at an annual rate of $53,554.54. That's the cost of a, like a first-year teacher. Now with benefits. With your, so it's an- First year teacher is 55,000 plus benefits. You're talking 85,000-ish. But so I- So you have one plus benefits for all we know. I will know the case is my point. I've never heard of an aide making $53,000. That's... With benefits, though. You have to include benefits. No, but even so, I've never heard of an aide making that much money. It seems a little unbalanced. So I just wanted to comment on that. And... Um, the benefit cost is around, could be around $35,000 alone. You're saying for an aide? Health benefit cost, yes. You're I'm, the health not, I'm not talking about teacher benefits. This is the same for AIDS. So a total benefit, but is this a total benefit package or is this in a salary right here? No, that's because that's the entire price of the aid. So it would factor in salary, benefits, DCRP payments, FICA payments, all those different things. So that's not just the salary. No, 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 no. Okay, not just the salary, okay. All right. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, the salary absolutely would be very, very high. I agree. Yeah, yeah. like I've never heard of that. Yeah. And um, the other thing is, this is a very basic question again. Do we have any services that are usually uh, a union would, would handle those services, but Delanco has privatized them? Do we have anything like that in Delanco? Not that. Like, for example, the um, the town used to maybe have the municipal, or some towns, they would have the municipal employees pick up the garbage, but then to save money, they contract out with a private so, firm. Do we have anything like that? That's asking what, what do we outsource for, correct? Yeah, okay, that must be like, what have we, um, we, cut, we contract with private firms, right? Outsourcing. So do we have any of that? We absolutely do. Uh, we, we've we talked about this. Uh, you've probably seen emails about this. NutraServe is our food service management company. We don't have mm -hmm. members that are actually Delanco staff members for that. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have our child study team through ESU. They're not Delanco staff members. Our tech support through uh, Morristown, they're not Del that he's not a Delanco staff member and so on. So we, we do it for, for a number of positions. Okay, but our custodial, that's not privatized, correct? Custodial, they are Delanco staff members. Okay, thank you. Those were, um, I'm going to stop my questions now to let other people, and then if nobody else has questions, then I'll continue. Hello? Can yes, I be Harry. heard? Yes. Yeah, Vera, a lot of the stuff that you're asking may seem like you know, they're really valid questions, except that you're, um, and, and the fact that you say, well, let's just, let me have a private conversation. If the questions are that important, then all of us should be part of at least the answer. And a lot of the questions you have, you've refused help from people within the board that have the answers because you don't trust them. So it, this is where we're at at this point. And a lot of the stuff you're doing is micromanaging, which the code of ethics, no micromanaging, not to administer the schools, but together with my fellow board members to see that they are well run. The questions you are asking about are how it's run. And that's why the, the, the school boards association, it's like you said, you learn something from your 
training. I'm, but, I'm going to reach out to the school board because I know Stephen does not have a, you know all day to teach me. So I will be reaching out to other I'm people on these um, that, yeah. financial questions. That is a good point. I don't want to take all his time. Hey, hey, Andrea, I think your questions are fine. They're relevant. You're asking questions about what's on it. That's what this meeting's for. I'm trying to no, do I a good job. I don't agree. Job. It has anything to do with ethics. So please don't even say that in this, in this kind of context, please. Thank you, Ben. It's no micromanaging, Ben. Well, it's micromanaging. I, I agree as another member who's, who's still learning. I appreciate it. Uh, I thought those questions were, were reasonable and weren't micromanaging. So, so, reason, so the reason why I asked Vera to include myself and Joe on that email so that we could be aware of the questions being asked and then the answers can be provided to the full board so that we can all learn together or we could have answers provided to us for things that we may not be aware of or maybe may not even be aware of to ask. So I'm going to hope that some of the questions that Vera brings about are going to be helpful to the majority and will be provided to the full board in its entirety. And that's why I feel like that's the best way to communicate. Hopefully that helps. It does help, Marissa, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, does anybody else have any questions? Yeah, I was wondering if, um, Stephen, you could talk a little bit about the, uh, I guess it's letter P, submission of Title I SIA, for SIA grant. Yeah, there were additional funds. If you notice, if you notice, we approved the ESCA grant probably in July, but these funds were just released about a month ago, right after the last board meeting or right, right before, so we couldn't get on the last board meeting. So we worked and, the, and it's $10,000. So what we're aiming for is to use it for SEL type stuff in Walnut. So that's, that's really all it's being used for, not all it's being used for, being used for. it's very important. But my point being is $10,000 will be spent for different kinds of furniture and supplies to build. I think the one, one, the one term was a Zen room. Um, another one was just get different kind of furniture to help, you know, SEL type causes and also for people to utilize. So that's what the 10,000 was going for. Thank you. Any other board members have any questions in regards to the budget and finance? If not, we'll, um, we'll uh, allow Vera to ask what remaining questions she has. Have, Steve, have we received any, um, any funding that has come through the pipeline yet, either federal or state that we've been expecting? Uh, most, of the, most of the things are grants, Harry, so we get reimbursed after we spend it. So, so, so for example, if we have a grant, for example, even just like IDA or ESEA, those grants, we put out the funds and then they get reimbursed. Gotcha. gotcha. So, like, so yeah, I could see that with some of the stuff in the budget, but I didn't know if there was any big windfalls or anything that yeah. comes to money flying at us. No. No, <laughs> I guess that's the answer. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Vera? Um, Thank my, you. my last thing that I want to ask today, um, like I always say, I just went through the finance training as a second year board member. Um, the, the training always was talking about comparing the treasurer's report with the secretary's report. Like you have to compare, compare, compare this, compare that. Why is it so important to have these two reports and to compare them? That's going to be my final question. Yeah, um, it's just the way I, the way I would look at it at is it's just a second way of checking everything. Um, the, the funny thing is, is when I reconcile the accounts, I'm basically I, I basically do the treasurer's work. Like that's what I do before I even do the board secretary stuff. So, for example, when I was in my previous district, we would do all that, and then send it over. We would just check our work. That's pretty much it. The the the, the, the purpose is to simply make sure the books match the bank accounts. It's it's basically in the, someone else outside of myself who just checking to verify that the books match 
the books match the bank account. That's really the whole purpose of it. Um, and then you see how common cover you see like a synopsis of it. And it just summarizes what our cash is at this point. So, it, I mean, all the information, you're right, all the information is in the treasurer's report is technically on the board secretary report. You're absolutely right. I think the key is simply just simply the two reports are just validating one another and it's not a check and checks and balances. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's, 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 my interpret, that's my interpretation. It's, it's pretty much just basic reconciliation, is it not? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. If the treasurer puts what well, I do to reconcile, and then, I do after, and then, you know, you send it all to the treasurer, but I'm talking to the treasurer who's outside the district, for me, I walk it down the hallway. Uh, but, um, and then you send it all, and then the treasurer just kind of checks it all, and make sure it all lines up, and does the official treasurer report. But how would I ever do a board secretary report if I didn't reconcile the books naturally? Uh, I don't know how we would ever do that. Um, pretty good. I would love to if I could. But, uh, <laughs> how many sets of books do we have? Uh, nine? <laughs> we only have one set of books. That's not a problem. Yeah, it might be nine or ten accounts. So. <laughs> and of course, I mean, it's never that. I mean, it's just not as. You know, some accounts are pretty easy, but accounts are more in depth. So. And you don't, you, you don't use whiteout, right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I do, but yeah, no, it's, um, it can be frustrating, dude. I, I'm going to tell you, reconciliation, uh, they can be frustrating because all of a sudden you're looking for $2. I wonder what $2 hours are, and you're looking for two hours for two hours. And that's frustrating sometimes. So, but, uh, no, yeah, it's, it is what it is. No big deal. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Operations and facilities. Is there any questions on that aspect of the agenda? Is there any problem with any of uh, rooms, specific rooms in any, any of either of the buildings? No, the good news are actually the good news. The, um, the HVAC and the auditorium, the Angelo cafeteria of Walnut uh, has been addressed and it now provides fresh air and we will be able to use that facility starting Monday. Um, so if you know that, if you remember that was closed last year, we were able to reopen it for Monday, which is great news. We still have some more repairs that have to be done, but fresh air is coming in and it's working for the first time in all, I don't know how long, but it's a very, very long time. So, not air conditioning, fresh air. Just let me trick quick. Good. Okay. Uh, a policy, it doesn't seem like there's anything to discuss specific to policy at this point in time, so I don't believe that there would be any questions unless anybody wanted to bring up anything. Oh, I do have one thing I wanted to bring up. Um, the policy is if you miss three consecutive regular meetings, it is possible to be removed from the board. Um, is a work session considered a regular meeting? It is considered a regular meeting because it's like um, a work session is like a committee meeting. So committee meetings are not labeled regular meetings. Are they on the agenda? Well, the purpose of going to Court of the Whole was to, to make the working session the time when the board members members are doing their work and then like committee it's meeting. like a big like committee <clears throat> it's my understanding that it's a meeting could i amy, ask could you amy could, yeah i mean i will uh miss garen can you provide a little bit of insight on this question please yeah I, um, I apologize i was distracted for a moment can you repeat the question sure so vera was asking yes. if our policy states that if a board member misses three consecutive meetings they have um there's a uh, there's a possibility that they could be removed from the board after a, a process that we would have to follow. And she was asking whether or not these workshop sessions, these work meetshop meetings, are considered meetings. I had not made mention that, that they are. Yeah. Correct. They're considered meetings, and just it may be your policy is also part of. Oh, I'm sorry. Someone's um, microphone is providing a lot of feedback. There we go. I just muted Steve Burns. Sorry, Steve. 
Okay, so um, it, it may be board policy, but it's also part of the school code that if you have three consecutive unexcused absences, you can be removed from the board. Um, that's after a process where the person gets notice of the intent to remove and an opportunity to explain him or herself to the board before the board actually votes on removal. So Amy, the key point is not the word regular meeting. The key point is unexcused absence, correct? Yes. Okay, and that's, so if our policy says regular meeting, that... Um, well, this, that is a, this is a regular meeting. This is a regular meeting of the board. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, any other questions regarding policy? Also, um, Mrs. Kamenugin, just for the sake of the public and the board members, uh, Steve Burns and I talked about this, and you know we could have named these Board of Ed regular meetings uh, hyphen work sessions. We could have done that, but we didn't want to confuse members of the public who thought that these were going to be the meetings where the board votes on items and the board is recognizing students and all of that. So we wanted to emphasize that they are called work sessions, but that doesn't change the fact that they are still regular meetings. You know, even though we're we're always calling them work sessions. It's still a regular meeting of the board. Yes. If Evans. I may, Marissa, um, Absolutely. maybe I'm missing on this, but I, I know we have the attorney here. Is this is this a thing? The attorney is going to be at the meeting, and are we paying for this every meeting? So while we're in a new setting, trying to learn how to handle the workshop sessions and the meetings, we did ask that we would have um, – the solicitor present to help answer questions that we may not be aware of, such as the question that Vera asked today for confirmation purposes. So um, at this point in time, that's how we're, we're moving forward so that we can have a good seamless situation um, that is handled in the most legal fashion. Do we Any have a part? limit? Go ahead, Vince. Go ahead, Vince. Uh, just a second part to the cost. The cost? Uh, that's not something that I'm um, at liberty to speak about in specifics, but uh, the, there is a cost, obviously. She is hired and she is working. But at the same time, this is something new, and I do feel that it's uh, an invaluable asset to our situation. And eventually, we won't necessarily have to utilize her at every meeting because we'll have a good understanding of how we are supposed to conduct ourselves in the with the agenda and how the process works obviously this is something very new to our Delanco school board so i find it to be very important for her to be present to answer the questions that we may not be aware of because it's something we have never experienced previously also a lot of this information is open also, public record so you could always go to um you could request that information through the board, or you could go to oprahmachine.com and ask for the um, Oprah information that way. Although submitting an Oprah request is the lawyer speaking? fairly expensive, that should be a last resort. Just throw that out there. Who was speaking? The lawyer? Uh, so no, that was Vera. Oh, Vera is a lawyer now. That's yeah, rude. I don't, I don't appreciate. No, we no, just no, had a sorry, workshop no. in my. We had a workshop in my school about bullying, <laughs> and one of the points was don't let that sort of rude behavior slide. And I'm not letting it slide, Harry. I don't appreciate that, and I don't think the public likes that, and a board member either. Vera, because you're asking a question of why do we need the lawyer because of the your behavior over the last oh, well over a year and when we're trying we're going to a different system to try to accommodate you and we're a board not a school we don't operate like a school we operate like a board and if that's the only frame of reference you have it's the committee difficult. of the whole was it's not just because we're not supposed to me. First of, all, first of all, that was Vince, that was Vince's question, and I think that we we pretty we covered this pretty well. Yeah, and, and we are in this situation because we feel as a board of a blend of new and old, and it's a great opportunity to be able to have every to understand to discuss. Not the whole board. That wasn't a vote that we made on this. We we actually did. Um, do a vote to say how we were going to proceed forward. I don't know. 
Right, if that's the case, I'm, I'm I mean, we didn't vote on the rule. I don't Vera. have. I'm not prepared to to research. That's that not necessarily something you would vote on, Vera. So, um, what we did vote on is the committee of the whole, and that's why we're in the situation that we are in right now. And but yeah. it's not yeah. just because of Vera. It is just questionable. We don't have a as a board to make a decision right. to go board in this direction. The board has been a split board and we're trying to make it so that it functions and there were opportunities, but because, and I'll be blunt, some of the new board members in the last couple of years do not trust the existing board, do not trust everything that reason? happened in the past and want to assign some kind of either accountability, blame or gotcha moment and are causing the disruptions that they're now saying are costing too much. And I think at I least think we're we're we don't have a foreign language or we don't have pre-algebra, we don't have activity. Wait, that's, that's not even on the agenda. So that's not what we're discussing right now. So let's let that lie. Um, we've discussed that at length. So what we're discussing right now was the question that Vera had brought up and I did provide insight and that Vince brought up and I did provide insight. And I feel very comfortable that we can move on from that. Okay, so we're gonna move on to personnel. And does anybody have any discuss, anything to discuss in regards to the personnel aspect of the agenda? First, if I may, on, on the person, it was mentioned about two instructional aides um, leaving. And uh, just a question about refilling. I know it's tough filling those kind of things right now. Just if, uh, I don't know if uh, there are any updates on that or not. We, we do have postings out and we also we have shifted some staff members around uh if if you look in that same section you'll you'll see that john mulhern is uh is going to be approved well you know is on the, the agenda for approval as a part-time instructional aide so that will assist us but losing two instructional aides at walnut caused us to move some people around like i said but uh we still do have vacancies that we need to fill Thank you. And the principals have received some resumes, but these are these are positions that are typically typically difficult to fill. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions on this aspect? Um, I have a question about the stipends. Yes. Um, I know we had to, we had to cut programs because of budget um, issues, and there was talk of basically if when we got sort of any financial support from the government, whenever that finally came in, that we would potentially look at bringing some of the school programs back. Um, I know Stephen just mentioned that basically we would spend the money and then get reimbursed for that. I'm just kind of curious where that is right now because the stipends right now obviously just have the drama club on them. So. We, we do have stipends for uh supervision during lunch and recess and that yeah I, I meant for clubs and oh you meant for, okay Sorry. i was gonna say i can i can speak to lunch and recess because that yeah. was a decision we made recently because otherwise we'd have multiple lunch periods without enough coverage and the reason we have many more lunch periods than we typically would need is because of the covid 19 situation mm -hmm. students need to be appropriately distanced uh in the cafeteria so but as for the other topic uh it, Steve and I have been talking about it and you know we're still we're still looking at it. Steve, do you have an update about those funds though? Because it it hasn't been discussed in recent weeks simply because we've been focused on other things. Yeah, the other issue was when we look at the budget, when we mentioned when we talked in August, one thing we have to be very careful is the budget fund down. So even if we see money in the budget, we need a certain amount of money to be carried over from two years from now, or else we're going to have more cuts in terms of teachers and so forth. So that's really the biggest issue in my mind is how do we solidify the budget, the budget fund balance for the future? Because without that, we can keep taking money, but the ramifications are going to come eventually. And just like it came this year. So that's that's the difficulty with it is that I'm noticing the budget fund balance and we actually didn't we have I think I had a plan I did have a plan I would need extraordinary aid money at first but then we then needed that for special ed cost as proved back in August 
that was my initial plan. So that's so to answer your, your question, Catherine, uh, the initial plan had to be modified because of special education costs. And since then, it's hard for me to, to say we should take from the general fund when we need a certain amount of money to be carried over two years from now, or else we're back in the same position we're in anyhow. Yeah, I certainly don't want certainly want, don't want to do it at the expenses of the future. But I was just curious. Yeah, it's really, it's really a really big concern for me. I, got, I, I think I've talked about it how many times since I've been here. I've only been here two and a half months, not even that. Um, yeah, uh, I'm concerned about the future. I'm, I'm concerned more about 23, 24 than 22, 23, to be honest, from a budgetary standpoint. Just Steve, right Stephen, have we received any of the American Rescue money? No, we have, we have to provide the grant in uh, by November 15th ish. So that's that's why I'm working the budget to see if we, to me, driving the budget actually would drive the grant. I'm looking at a couple of different things to see how we can kind of get surplus up, because without that we can't. 23, 24 looks may not look too good. So, so that's why I'm looking the budget now with the idea that I'm gonna have a couple of different options for the grant that Joe and I can look at hopefully. And I also asked a few. I asked a question to the ESSER grant people at the state. Seeing if we could use this for a certain purpose out of this year's funds to try to build up that surplus as well. I have not heard back. They're looking into it for me. They, they did respond to looking into it for me. I have not heard back. My interpretation is I can. If I can, I think I can use it in creative potentially, but I, don't, I can't confirm that. Right. And I think that that's kind of what I wanted to put out there is that, you know, we were promised this windfall of monies, but it's come with a lot of strings and it's come with a lot of stipulations. And unfortunately, we're not able to use it as we wish to provide, you know, extras on our wish list. We can't even provide for what we need for that matter, for, for the most part. So when, I just wanted to put that out there because I know there's a lot of misconceptions out there that we should have this windfall of money that we should be able to put back in to provide additional items. But unfortunately, that's not necessarily the case. And there's quite a bit of stipulation as to how the money has to be used, where it can be used, and the process for usage as well. And the money goes away. Mm -hmm. So it's not sustainable, you know, we're not, if I was planning this optimally, all the CARES money, all the ARP and lesser funds, they'd be used for one-time purchases. You want to buy Chromebooks, you want to buy, upgrade your servers, you want to upgrade your buildings, here's the time to do it. But you might we're in survival mode. So we're just trying to figure out how to survive the budget. And that's, so these funds, what happens if you use them? I mean, that, that's part of the conversation I'm having with, with Joe and Tim Allen. Uh, drug facilities is we put 350 almost 350,000 facility budget into yes or two grant that money has to go back into the budget we can't survive without that so my plan for next year is to put it back in the, my hope is to put it back in the budget i mean create a sustainable budget for 23-24 where it can stay in it because i need another option but if we use the arp to supply that then we're going to 23-24 we're now not only the whole potential budget fund balance we can be the home because we have three hundred fifty thousand dollars coming out of federal grant money that's no longer there. So we could be in even bigger hole. So I'm, I, I think I mean the fact the, you know, the reason why I'm giving presentations monthly right now because I'm not I don't do things in secret. I, I try to be about everything and I'm trying to show you monthly what the position is and what I'm working on so you can understand why I'm doing things. I can't tell you I have a solution right now. I have ideas, and I'm hoping one of them will stick to the wall. You know, that's kind of my hope right now. Uh, but at least I have ideas, and I have an idea out there. If they allow me to do it, I, I'm hoping they'll let me do something which would then swing our surplus this year potentially up, which would translate to 23, 24, but hopefully can balance the budget fund balance, and then we can kind of go from there. I can't guarantee it's going to work. They may not approve it. They may, not, they may say it's no good. So I don't know. What about town council? Is they, have they come in recently to any assistance or to any advice on this whole situation? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part, Vince. I'd, I'd like, I'm wondering if town council is, is aware of this, if they've come to us recently. I know we've appealed to them before, or any recent develops with that, considering, I mean, I understand what we need to do to prepare for the future, but when you have kids in the school now, in the middle school, you're concerned when there's no activities, no sports, none of those things. When other schools happen, the schools in, in in places where I wouldn't want to go at night, they have those things, but we don't have that here. I mean, it's upsetting, and the people that are that have their kids here about this, and and 
Steve, nothing to do with you. It's been a great job. Oh, no, that's a good person. It's a good person. It's frustrating being a parent knowing that we, we're, we have to deal with things like this. And it's frustrating when we have when we have something that was supposed to bring us revenue, and I don't and I don't see it coming in yet. But I see the houses built in that community, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, I don't even about the township at this point. One, one question, for Joe, if I may. What about if Dice are using the gymnasium? Can we can we work that out better where they can actually use this? So maybe we could get some programs that could be used at that gymnasium this year. So it's it's still they have put in a request. It's still being considered. Uh, Steve and I are talking with Tim Allen. One of our challenges there is we are short staffed by one person on the facilities team. That person was RIF last year. So when it comes to having other entities in our school, that creates a more intense need for cleaning and sanitizing at other times when we already are allotting time for custodians during the school day. So that's another challenge that we're looking at and figuring out how can we how could we make that work you know i, I know the staff you have that you know, the custodian staff and i know they they would do everything possible to make sure that these kids had something to do i mean there's ways to work things i agree with you and i think that, i mean we've received requests from recreation and dysa right now we still need to consider it and figure out do we have the staffing in place for custodial? Because what happens is when these events are taking place in the building multiple nights per week, and hypothetically, you know, it could be four nights per week at both buildings, that is very intensive on the custodians when it comes to everything they need to do. So it's, it's important for us to make sure that that team has enough support to make it happen. All I ask the board is if whatever we could do to make something happen there, you know, I think this is a big part of, of development for for children for kids we all know that not having these things is a huge detriment to how they're growing up and everything that they're facing through COVID. they need these things they're very essential we have to figure out the way a way to make this work because i just think we can we should make this a focus and 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 work harder on it to make something happen vince i agree um i live right by the field the walnut field i see what goes on on the field the fights that break out the bullying, I see it. And these kind of activities, it's not an extra. When we talk about social and emotional development, these after school activities are essential. So my feeling is the special ed costs are out of balance. We're not sustainable. And I know there's some, there's, there's, we're legally obligated, but we also have some room within those legal obligations. That's why I have to vote. I often vote no on these high tuitions at private schools because this, these kind of tuitions do come at a cost to the other kids. And we have to put that in balance. Do you know what I'm saying? I know there's a legal obligation, there's a moral obligation, but things are out of balance. Vera, we've known that for a while. I've said that at meetings many a time. The but problem we, is we might we have are wiggle room there. We to might provide these not children every school with the education. Ninety thousand dollars. I know, Vera. Can you please allow Phil to have his word, please? I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Marissa. We are required to provide the children with the education for special ed. I have sat at meetings for the last couple of years. And I have sat there and complained that special ed costs are taking away from the rest of our children in our school. The state of New Jersey needs to be picking up more of special ed costs. K through eight districts like us are suffering because now we're cutting teachers, we're cutting programs. And just like Steve said earlier, it's going to get more difficult in the next coming years. I tell everybody what we need to be doing is come next election, we need to be asking our state senators, our state assemblymen, our people running for government, what are you doing with special ed? S small schools work. Everybody seems to think, oh, we're going to consolidate and that's going to take care of everything. No, that will not take every care of everything. I like the small town school. I like the fact that my children went to school from kindergarten to high school, knowing the same group of people. But the same thing that's hurting all the other small districts is hurting us. Special ed costs. Voting no because you don't like the bill doesn't do a doggone bit of good. We need to find 
the state needs to find another way of funding it so we can start providing all the other programs for our children. That's what needs to be done. In the meantime, I'm going to vote. I'm not going to vote to not give a special ed person education, but I'm not going to vote for top of the line school. When we have when we have room, we uh, Mr. Mersinger answered my question a long time ago. We're not obligated to give the the top choice, which is ninety thousand plus transportation plus aid. That's bankrupting us. If it's we, a, lot of those decisions are, a lot of those decisions are out of our hands and those placements are out of our discretion. So unfortunately, while it seems as though it's not fair, it's unfortunately a mandate that we must follow. I think that we have more discretion than we're using. That's why we have I, a lawyer. I also, um, all right, go, um, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Really quick. The board, the board um, actually does not get any say whatsoever in what is an appropriate education for a special education student. Um, it is not your role. Uh, and legally, by both federal law and state law, um, those decisions are put in the hands of a child's individual education team. Um, it's, it's actually called an IEP team. The child study team and the IEP team work to evaluate children and then work with them to develop appropriate programs. That team makes the decision about where the students go. The board has no role in that. Then why do I get to vote on it? Because you vote on expenditures, but you are legally required to approve expenditures that are legally necessary. That is a legally necessary expenditure. And I shouldn't be voting on it at all. Uh, if I can't job, vote no, what is the vote. use of voting? If I can't vote no, what's the use of voting? I'm it's gonna double check this. We'll leave it here. I'm gonna research this point. Marissa, if I can comment for a minute on special ed. You may. Thank you. So for the board and for the public, uh, over the summer, we've received a number of new registrations. A lot of kindergartners, of course, but also kids in other grades. And what happens uh, every summer or even during the middle of the year, we receive students that have special needs, whether it's special needs that are addressed in district, sometimes they're addressed out of district. When a child arrives and they are already in an out of district placement, that is an unbudgeted, first of all, it's an unbudgeted expense for us. So I completely understand the concerns about cost. But at the same time, the child study team needs to go through a process to make any changes if it's deemed necessary. That is not always the case. The placement many times is an appropriate placement. So that's why for the sake of the board and the public, you know, we, when we receive a student that is already in an out of district placement, we do have a, a means of changing that placement if necessary, if it benefits the child, if, it, if that's what the child needs. That yes. does not mean that we just have carte blanche to, to change a child's placement whenever they arrive in Delanco. We don't. So that is part of the challenge for us. And that's also why uh, we've developed our own in-district program for special education in that we do have a number of students in now. And we're going to keep expanding on those programs, but that takes time. We, we can't suddenly create new programs, uh, a bunch in a year. We've created one new program for this year. I, I already predict that it's going to be awesome. It's going to be successful, but it takes time to develop the next one and the next one. If the board recalls, our, our child study team was um, Riverside for a number of years. And so when Riverside was the child study team, they were following a certain plan, but then we developed our own child study team. And for the past year and a half, we haven't well, been able to take much action because of the COVID-19 situation. And think about, think about it for those of us who are parents. If you have a child that's in a placement, you're not going to have a district suddenly say, in the middle of COVID-19, the child now is going to be in a different placement. That doesn't, we, we need to assess the children evaluate the programs they're in. That was not possible for much of what was happening over the past year and a half. So it's just important for everyone to understand that it's a process that we have to go through uh, for each child every time they come into the district and they have needs that way. So are we 
receiving any benefit from people leaving the school or transferring going to private school? There's been a lot of that this year. There have been transfers out and there are sometimes students with IEPs that will transfer out and then that will definitely lower costs at times. But that's um, what, what I can say is what I'd like to prepare for the board at some point over the next month is a report to show the incoming student population of new registrations without names and anything identifiable and just saying, you know, here's the percentage of students that have IEPs. Here's the percentage that are out of district when they register. You know, these are things that I think are important for the board to see. Thank you. I can also add um, to the uh, to the process, uh, again, there's a legal requirement, and Joe is an educator, I'm sure you can weigh in on this. The decisions about what is appropriate for a child and where they go to school is not budget driven. Um, it, it, there can be, if, if an out of district placement, strike that, if a child with an IEP cannot be serviced by their own district, and it's determined that they have to go elsewhere for education, you can look at that point, the uh, child study team can look at multiple options, but all of those options have to fit the student's needs, and all of those options need to be accepting incoming students at the time. Um, the decisions are not budget driven. It's all about meeting the needs of the child. And then the decision gets written into the child's IEP. Um, and at that time, the IEP is, is decided, it's closed, it's done, the decision is made, and it's the financial responsibility of the board to fund it. Thanks, and Jimmy. I that, that, that adds a lot to it about the finance piece because Steve Burns has never said, Joe, I want to be in those IEP meetings because he knows that that's not something a BA should or could do. But but at the same time, I th think that's kind of what the board, some board members might think is possible, that we can look at the finances and say, we're going to choose this placement because of finances, and that's not an appropriate action on the part of our child study team. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. That was really helpful. Does everyone, does everyone have the, the special education process handout? That explains it. And I got cut off, so I have no idea what people did or did, didn't hear the last time I was speaking about the federal law or the handicapped and how there are benefits that are outside of education, not, not only affect education. Thank you. Okay, is there any more um, that anybody would like to add to this aspect of the agenda at this point in time? I just need a clarification. So our child study team, you said that's the ESU, is that, could you tell me the um, what that stands for again? Educational Services Unit. So our child study team is made up of uh, staff members from the Educational Services Unit, as well as a Delanco staff member, and me, another Delanco staff member. So the educational service unit, is that part of um, like BIT or is that a private outfit? They are, are part of it, but they're, they also run independently. So they have, B, ESU is basically a, a separate entity that exists within BCIT and special services. Are they a private company or no? No, so they're, they're a, part of the county, the county school system. Okay, they, thank the you. History, the history of it is that they evolved from being on this side of the county, Western Burlington County, and was doing the kinds of stuff that they're doing now. And it grew, and then the county took it over. And that's what I keep saying, the same need. It's like a bush. You cut it down, it grows back. The same needs have grown back to where we might be better off regionally having one sitting child study team or an area here, and it can be coordinated through BCIT, special services, ESU. Counties either have a special services school or an ESU. Camden County has an ESU. We are fortunate we have both. And it's pri it's it's uh it's public. It's not a private uh, company. And, 
and I will state for the good of the board and the public that our ESU staff members and our Delanco staff members are doing a fantastic job with this. I, I, and they really are. There are many challenges in education and this board has seen that special education presents a number of challenges, uh, financial challenges and so on, but at the heart of it is what are the needs of a particular child? And that's what the team focuses on. So um, I think it's important for us to not lose sight of that. At the same time, we do need to look at the financial aspect of it because as board members are saying, there's a big concern when we have so many out of district students. I agree with that completely. And that's why it's one of the goals of the child study team to look at opportunities for us to develop our own programs and meet the needs of the students in district. Did you tell me why this wasn't tried years ago, bringing these students back? I can't answer for what Riverside did or did not do. So I, you, Delanco couldn't have anything to do with that? Like uh, Riverside would classify them and then you would bring them into the, the Delanco schools. Why didn't we have classes before in Delanco or we did, did we? We did have one self-contained class in Pearson a number of years ago and then it was discontinued because of students either aging out of it or uh, being classified with, with new placements. So, so what we're doing now, we could have done before. We would have just had Riverside, their child study team being in place of the ESU, but we could have done this years ago. Yes, but let's all remember, we discontinued our relationship with Riverside and that's all I'll say about it. But we still could have done it even we did do it for a little bit, but then we had to discontinue. And, and we're talking about we're talking about something that's over right. and done with. Yeah, you can't change the past. Yeah. Right. And it's, I'm it's I'm excited it, that we do have something that's in-house. And I am also excited that Steve Burns is looking into the future and trying to be creative. And I think that all of those things are going to be a positive for Delanco and hopefully will allow us to bring more things in-house, including extracurriculars. That's the hope. The past brought us to where we are, though. So we do need to understand the factors in the past that brought us to this point. I think Everyone we're all aware of where the past is and where the present is going. And everyone seems to understand it differently, has their own version of it. And, and meaning to it. And if we had done this, then that would have happened. You know, it's the old butterfly wing changing the light of history. Um, sounds like we're moving in the right direction. So I'm, I'm happy about that. One Thank word. You, Thank you. Okay, board liaison reports. Riverside, did you, Riverside, Cameron, did you have anything to report from Riverside that you wanted oh. to bring? attention of the board i'll report it all next week because we meet tomorrow in person so it should go like a breeze mm -hmm. no problem thank you so much njsba bcsba mr litwack would you like to provide any input from on today today you're on mute in case you're speaking Harry, I, I don't know if you're aware, but you're on mute. Oh, okay. There you are. There you are. Sorry. You're good. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. No problem. But the, um, yeah, I've been, as you know, trouble on here. I had, uh, it was a hybrid meeting. I went last week to the school boards association. And since then, my, it's been very difficult. It was some form of Zoom, Zusa or something. But anyway, the 23rd, um, they're going to be talking about social and emotional learning. And everybody, it, it, they're doing them hybrid. And also, we might want to look into the School Boards Association as some new technology that they're using off of Zoom for uh, you know, uh, hybrid meetings that we had kind of been discussing trying to do. And you might want to check with them in their technology department. And apparently, some bigger districts or 
using that as well. But um, I had problems last Tuesday, the meeting, it was a hybrid meeting here in Burlington County that there were people not only from our county, but from all over the state. That's what's going on now because they're hybrid. You don't have to just do Burlington County. You can do any of the counties and they have different topics, different speakers, different subjects. And that's where we learn our a lot of the background material and see that there's commonality of problems. These aren't just unique to uh, our district and that other folks, and I know Joe knows this from working with superintendents, in an area there seems to be methodologies of how you deal with certain problems. So um, the 23rd, it's virtual. Usually the meetings um, are uh, seven o'clock sometime. Now when they're hybrid, they actually were, you know, they usually get a meal. It was over at the golf, a golf course over in uh, Medford. So that is going on. And coming up, um, there's a, um, is it October? Yeah, the uh, 1st of October, the uh, board of directors meeting that I'll be attending. And then once again, the end of October is the, um, the School Boards Association virtual conference, the Zoom conference, where we can learn, we can learn about all different kinds of things that we're interested in specifically. So that, that's it. And I wasn't able to stay connected to the meeting, so I really don't know what happened at the meeting. It would go really in and out, worse than I've been experiencing tonight. Interesting. Thank, Thank you, Harry. Appreciate it. Um, Catherine, yeah. did you have anything that you wanted to uh, bring about in regards to the Township Committee? Um, no new updates, but I just wanted to remind everybody that 9-13, which I think is Monday. Mm -hmm. is that Monday? Yeah, Monday. Um, the Township's having a meeting where they're going to be taking community input on 200 Ash Street, and they will also be discussing the Cannabis Advisory Board. Excellent. Thank you. And I, I will say that I did participate in the Route 130 Advisory Committee. Uh, I believe it was perhaps last week. And uh, we had a lot of good discussion about things that Delanco is in need of. And one of the items I did bring up was the uh, issue in regards to transportation and how the district is uh, a walking community, a community that would require great sidewalks, you know, good entrance and, you know, and exit to our town. And those are areas that we certainly need to address because there's a lot of areas in Delanco where the sidewalks are just truly not safe if we are expecting a child to walk to a school in the event that transportation was limited or wasn't provided in, in the foreseeable future. Um, so these were um, some of the topics of discussion. Obviously that was something that I personally focused on in regards to two both ends of the town, because obviously we have children that are bus from both ends of the town. And, you know, there are issues all the way up and down that could be addressed. And I tried to bring up as many as possible so that they were at least on the minds of those making those decisions or those submitting documents for those decisions. So I just wanted to put that out there. Love that. Thank you. Uh, okay, if there's nothing further in regards to the liaison reports, we will now move into old business. Uh, Marissa? Yes. Yeah, if I may. Um, yeah. When I got cut off before, that's what I was, I think, speaking about is that the, the universal benefit that comes from some of the special ed, you know, we get money through special ed, but communities get it through different federal programs based on that, that there's cutouts. If that's how I think we got, I think the community just bonded 470,000, 60,000 um, for the sidewalks and stuff. And some of that, a lot of it gets subsidized because of people with disabilities, the American Disabilities Act that gets funding for those cutouts so that that, that work can be done at a much more reasonable cost. So that's a benefit that some of the disabled uh, population has actually brought about to help everyone. Mm -hmm. Universal benefit. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. So in old business, one of the topics that I wanted to bring up was the Board of Ed meeting format. We have discussed it um, for several meetings now, and we have discussed in-person, hybrid, and virtual. Myself, Steve McLaughlin, Mr. Mersinger, Albert, and the Morstone team had a great discussion in regards to if this was a possibility for our board to do, whether it be a hybrid model, an in-person model, or maintain the virtual model and how it would even be possible to make it, you know, to, to work itself out. So I'm going to allow Stephen, if he doesn't mind, to speak on it a little bit more, only because he has more of the tech background to be more informative for the majority of us, because I certainly wouldn't do it any justice. So Steve, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, so the, the real challenge with doing a hybrid meeting right now is the audio. It, even short of a hybrid meeting, if, if we wanted to do a meeting where we just met in person and then streamed it, on the internet so that people could watch. Um, right now, we just don't have a setup where we can get audio from everybody clearly. Um, and we did a few meetings, or before I was on the board, we did a few meetings last year with just a single laptop set up and, and the audio was just not very good. Um, so one thing that, just as a point of comparison, one thing that Morristown has that we don't have is uh, they have a wireless mic set up um, already so that doing a stream for them, all they have to do is to take the audio out of their uh, the, the head unit and, and put it into the computer and, the, and they're all set. Um, so we discussed, uh, we went through a lot of different possible configurations. I, I basically, I, it's important to me to, if we meet in person to, to make sure these things are streamed online. So I looked into uh, different, various, you know, many different microphones we could use to try to keep the cost down um, and mixers we could use. And we came up with something that you know, would have potentially worked. Uh, uh, Ms. Darmo and I were willing to split the cost uh, just to make the make the transition a little easier, um, but it was it was still a somewhat unwieldy setup, and it would have taken a quite about quite a lot of time. And so Albert had had reservations about the amount of time that it would take, and the kind of the and then questions about what would happen if he's if Albert's not there, we'd have to get somebody else from Morristown um, to do uh, overtime. So we really we kind of laid out exactly what the what this would entail. And I think where we ended up was deciding that we should we should consider getting a better audio setup, maybe a little bit longer term, maybe putting it in the next budget uh, potentially. Um, but I think where we where we ended up leaning toward after this meeting was sticking with remote meetings for, for both meetings um, for the foreseeable future, and then taking steps to get the audio set up uh, uh, in place for hybrid meetings you know, later down the road, months down the road. I think we still need yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is correct. Uh, that was the discussion and that really was where the end result was driven to because it wasn't just Albert, it was also the other personnel at Morristown that all believe that at this point in time, we're not truly set up for where we need to be technologically wise. Um, for these types of meetings, to be able to do everything that we want to do, to be able to provide the in-person feel, as well as provide the access for those who want to remain virtual and for the community as well. And, and I, like I said, I was all for you know going in person. I felt there was a huge benefit to it. And I still do believe there's a benefit to it. But at the same time, I think that the the negatives outweigh the positives in regards to that aspect. I think that if we push to go back to provide an in-person format, there will be a lot of individuals in the community who may, you know, virtually participate. They won't necessarily get the true feel of what is going on. There may be uh, members of the community that, you know, will lose their access, so to speak, that they've enjoyed for the past year. And while, yes, they could still come in person, there's still a concern right now in regards to COVID, uh, in regards to the Delta variant and any other variant at this point in time that seems to be emerging about. So even besides the whole medical aspect of it and the health concerns, tech now, technology wise, we're just not there. And it's unfortunate, but we don't even have the budget to get us there. And to be quite honest, I would never want Steve and Vera to put their monies out for something experimental, for something that truly may not work and that they end up losing monies out, out of their pockets for, out of, for their families, even though they were so generous to offer that. 
and we do appreciate that greatly. Um, Albert and the Morristown team, you know, stress that a specific budgetary amount that needs to be discussed should come into play with the budget season next year. It's something we should plan for. We also spoke about the best place to utilize such technology would be the gymnasium um, as well, because the sound is much better in there for what we would need to do. And it does provide access for the community in a larger sense, more seating, more availability. We also did discuss, because obviously one of the biggest uh, holdbacks for me was, you know, wanting to provide the students with a moment of praise for the student of the month recognition. And Mr. Mercier had discussed that there are other ways that we could possibly work that out because I, I felt while it, it was nice to be able to do it virtually, at times I know the parents would love to be in person to take the pictures of more than just like the Brady Bunch screen. You know, they want to try to do something in person and you know, there's going to be opportunities, I think, for more discussion on how that may present itself in the future, uh, that perhaps some things will be handled in school, some things will be handled um, in a different fashion to provide those opportunities for the students and for perhaps the parents as well. So that was another aspect of the discussion. And, and for me, it, as long as the children get to receive that praise and get to receive that recognition, that's really the most important part of why I was pushing so hard for it. You know, obviously the parents would like to be there too. And I'm sure there's going to be discussions on how and if that's going to be possible. Right now with COVID, these are still precarious times. And obviously there's needs to be planning put in place and more discussions put in place for that type of recognition ceremony, as I would call it. But I do know that these are discussions on the minds of all and that the plan is to really dig deeper and think about how we can provide such recognition to the students at the Lineville. Uh, Marissa, my, uh, may I have my two cents? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm not in favor of, of the you know, Zoom meetings. These are public meetings. I think they should be open to the public. Mm -hmm. We have children in school. I see there's no reason why we cannot, you know, if we're asking the children to come back to school, there's no reason we shouldn't be sitting there holding our meetings in front of everybody else. I understand our technology isn't there. What's it going to be next year, the year after? Who knows? Every year we have budget problems and we continually have budget problems. I mean, it's, it's a little bit ridiculous, you know, sitting here watching a Zoom meeting and this one won't show their face or this one has continual problems. I mean, it's it's we need public meetings. And, you know, if somebody doesn't feel comfortable going to the meetings, fine, they can. Steve was showing it on uh, his computer from before. He could still do the same things. I'm a firm believer that we need to go back to public meetings. That's all. Thank you. Does anybody else want to bring up anything at this point in time? Um, is this new business or still this, on old business? We're still on old business. We're still oh, okay. on meetings. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, I'm gonna wait for new business. Okay. Harry, did you wanna discuss anything in regards to the old business, the Board of Ed meeting format? I'll just say I, I support, support virtual going forward. Yeah, and, and so do I have made my opinion known on that topic. Mm -hmm. Of checking with the school boards association. I'm sorry. What's that, Harry? Of checking with the school boards association. That that's what I would mentioned earlier. They have some kind of state of the art that's supposed to be able to do hybrid Zoom. That it's still a new tool that we have to try it out. You know. Yeah, I, I, I'm saying they. That's the school boards association looking out for not just them, but. I think some of the larger school boards use it too. I don't know that we'd be able to afford it or have the technology to use it, but I, it's worth checking with because it does exist. And that's why they're, they're attempting to do hybrid going forward with their meetings all around the state. So. Yeah, I, I definitely think it's worth exploring. I think that you know we could reach out to the New Jersey Board Association to find out exactly what technology they're utilizing you know, is it a, a unique Zoom format? That yeah, it is. That's what I'm saying. That's what they are. Yeah, right. that's what and I'm if, saying. They mention that if 
when it, it was just recently that it's it's some new variant of Zoom, Sue Zoom or something. I don't know what it was, but that was, you know, what does exist that they're using. That's something new that they mentioned. So, and their tech people might be able to, you know, if you call the tech people, like Billy and whoever there are tech people, may find out. Okay, this is compatible. That isn't. That's all. That it's. Yeah. That would be it's interesting. Above my, it's above my pay grade. Okay. Uh, yeah. Send any information about that that you have uh, my way if you if you like. Um, I'm curious about that, but we. we have so right now we have a, calendar, a meeting on the calendar for next week, and I think the best thing to do is, is to meet virtually. Um, and the main thing for me is just maintaining public access, maintaining, you know, we have a bigger audience here than we would in person. And so that's, that's worth a lot to me. Yeah, well. And I think that as we explore new ideas and see what possibilities we can bring into Delanco, this can be revisited. You know, we can address this monthly or bi-monthly, however it is that it needs to come to the attention of the board members, you know, obviously we'd like to reach out to the school boards association. And that could be something we can discuss further as well. If that's something that is viable for Delanco, we have the capabilities to integrate that technology in Delanco without um, a cost that we couldn't afford, that we could afford, you know, or, or something of that matter that's truly worth exploring because ideally it would be great to get back to a, to the normal that we previously were at. But at the same time, we have to also understand that right now, in order to have the virtual capabilities, the interaction with the community virtually as well as in person, our technology just doesn't allow it. Um, it doesn't, yeah. there's, no, there's no capacity for it. We just don't have it. Albert has, has stressed uh, numerous occasions that it's just, while it would be great, we just can't do it right now. And the individuals at Morristown, their team also reinforced that mindset and that feeling that as of right now, we don't have the capability to do it. We don't have the technology to do it. Um, they provided us with what could possibly be something we could utilize in the in the future. And right now, that is certainly not something I would ever want Stephen or, or Vera to put on their uh, credit cards whatsoever. The, the cost was way more than what we could imagine oh, at this point in time. So. They're you know, board members. Excuse they get me. Paid so much, they can spend that extra. <laughs> <laughs> right, our, our volunteer the, uh, monies. Yes, I, I think it's just tech to tech. I mean, that's what we had trouble. I remember asking, you know, when we try to have microphones. You know, this isn't a high tech. We're not certainly not high tech. Mm -hmm. I I personally agree with Phil's point of view. But as an individual, you know, about if the kids are back, that the adults should be back. But I personally would not attend a, a meeting. Um, but that's just my personal preference. Absolutely. Why don't so, we take a vote and see who wants to go back and who doesn't? We can do a straw vote to see how we would like to see where this goes. And then, of course, mm -hmm. if it passes wonderfully, then we would move forward in that format, knowing there would be technological lapses and that members of the community may not have the access they have currently. We can certainly do that. And then we could also, you know, if it doesn't go forward as we wish, we can choose to revisit it. It doesn't have to be a dead horse. You know what I mean? We could obviously revisit this aren't as it's forward. Aren't we scheduled to be Zoom? Isn't that what was posted in the paper? No. Yeah. So there will. So, oh, so just just to interrupt, we we um, you know, just, if the board were to vote today, you know, we have a week from now. So just like Stephen McLaughlin is saying, to have that arrangement ready a week from now, I would say is not possible. No, it would have to be within the ne next month. That would be something we would have to, if the vote were to go forward, it would go with the understanding that it would not happen by next week. It's just not possible. Stephen, you have a lot of reverb reverberation on your end. I don't know what is going on with those speakers tonight. <laughs> okay. Um, so, okay, we can certainly go down the list. Um, I will just go by screen just to kind of see where we feel we are so that we can have a good idea, you know, and address this in just the comments of old business, you know, for the meeting. So, Vera, you're on my top left-hand corner, so I want to start with you. 
uh, virtual for me. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bob. You're muted, Bob. It didn't come off. Whatever you clicked didn't work. Maybe you have to double click, double unmute. Can't hear you. There you go. Stick with the Zoom until we get some answers on technology. Okay, thank, thank you. Phil, you're next. Resume, resume to a normal meeting. Thank you. Stephen, you're next. Uh, I'd like to stick on, uh, stay virtual for now. Thank you. Catherine, you're next. Virtual. Thank you. Vincent, you're next. Virtual. Thank you. Cameron, you're next. I'd prefer in person, but it's more logical until we can figure out an alternative, hopefully, you know, sooner than 2024, that we can stay on virtual for the time being. Understood. Thank you. Harry. To Zoom or to resume? <laughs> that is the question. Correct. I say Zoom. Okay, thank you. I am too also voting to, to maintain where we are at this point in time with Zoom and to revisit this in the future when other opportunities and ideas present themselves. So at this point in time, that is where we'll, we'll stand. Is there anything else to discuss in old business? Can I ask a question from the board? Can you hear me, Marissa? Yes. Oh, yes. Um, could we have a time, could I have a time frame? The reason why I ask is, by your posting, I have to change the posting for this one. That's another $80. If we choose you know, uh, October, it's not another, if we switch it again in October, it's another $80. Could we at least get a time frame like from now to November? That way I can advertise once for three months or it just, it just, it just, it just saves time and money. Um, I, I think that's a good idea. I think that, you know, if we revisit this month or whenever, the decision to go to that direction will have to be by the net, like, in the foreseeable future, we'll have to come up with a time frame that works budgetarily and for notification purposes. So, what, like you're saying, we're not end up constantly changing the postings that are going out and costing us that additional money to do so. So, so uh, is everyone okay with doing three months at a time? Meaning September, October, November, we'll we'll make it virtual, and then December that'll be the first time we'll get going back in person. Okay, we can revisit it. So, we can revisit it in November. How about that? Yeah. And, okay, so let's do it that way. We can have our discussions. We can do our research. And if anything new comes on the horizon, then we'll make that decision in November so that we can be sure to do what we need to do in a financially fiscal way. Marissa, just to note, um, it seems Mr. Jenkins has left the meeting because he has forgotten to charge his laptop. <laughs> so uh, he's he's down there trying to figure it out now. But if he makes it back in time for adjournment, uh, to be determined. Okay, I appreciate that update. Thank you. Uh, new business uh, materials from Board Vice President Exhibit D. Do we have discussion points on that? Is everyone aware of what that is? Yes, so, I'm, I'm not do it today. So if I'm every, not aware, their public folder in the Google Drive, there is the information from Harry that yeah. speaks about the code of ethics, the special oh, yeah, yeah. process, the building a budget with your board. You know, there's a lot of different information in there that is a great resource for old and new school board members to review for reference and for you know purpose so and for running for running our meetings as well so that we stay in bounds of what our uh code of ethics are because you, we start wandering off and we're in areas that we don't belong in and there is specific and mr mercinger and i have had as long as we've known each other this ongoing conversation about what is board responsibility? What is superintendent responsibility? And there is a delineation between them in order to be able to work together effectively. And some of that comes from the code of ethics. 
Some of that's from understanding the special education process that is a federal law and is a state law. And here's how to build the budget. If you want, you know, these come from these county meetings uh, where information is shared because we're all trying to improve the education of students. So I think this should be used as our kind of little template to get started so we can stay in bounds and that we're not going off on things as a board that aren't our territory and that we're focusing on what is our territory as a board. And I think these three documents will help to get us started. I think they're great. I think it gives a generalized look at what we should and shouldn't do. Even the code of ethics that sometimes can be um, misconstrued or whatever, it kind of breaks it down into a very simplistic format with bold type to say, this is what this tenant it, you know, focuses on. So I think that those are great things. I think that the information regarding building the budget um, in regards to the special education process are super important and great a great resource to refer to so that you have a good understanding of how things work and why they work the way that they do and, and what we can impact and truly what we cannot have an impact on. So I think that it's a great tool to, to utilize and I appreciate you sending that um, to uh, to us and for us to be able to use. So thank you, I appreciate yeah. that. Okay, and also just, uh, I, we made hard copies. I'm gonna have a hard copy during the meetings that you can refer to as well. I think that might be helpful. And the, um, you know, the ability to utilize and build our board the way we want to build our board is going to come from this. So is the way I look at it, staying in the, you know, the boundaries of what we can do and learning about that and calling each other out on it. When Vera say, it feels that I'm bullying her, I, I, I feel badly if you feel that way, Vera, but I'm just trying with the code of ethics to keep within the framework that will be helpful. And the, the same thing with the budget, it spells out when things get done. And so it's appropriate to get the information, synthesize it, and then, then the feedback for everybody to have the same feedback so that we can work as a board of the whole. Yeah, the, the budget you. timeline is uh, especially helpful because we're yeah, yeah. here, there's not a budget and finance committee. So, so I appreciate that. Thanks, Harry. Yeah, yeah, and I think, like I say, I don't know if you know, we can decide, do we want to vote on that or just, here, it's a resource, use it if you want. I don't, you know, or do we want that to be, you know, our, our little coda to begin with? Of, uh, I think it's a good resource for us to utilize. I don't think it's something yeah. that we need to yeah, vote on. To it's something that we should utilize. The tenants are obviously tenants we must follow anyway. Um, yeah. and, you know, so that's an understood entity there. And and for budgetary purposes and for special ed, these are it's just a great resource to refer to for our knowledge. I think that for me anyway, that's how I see it. I think that that's what's best. That, that's fine by me that like I say I think it's helpful information that it's really helpful and I appreciate yeah. it I think the more that we can gain from information provided whether it be virtually you know from you from your experience from the New, Jer New Jersey school boards it's all valuable information that's going to help us be a better board and better governing body so I do appreciate that thank you you're quite well mm-hmm Okay, do we have anything else that's new business at this point in time that we need to discuss? Uh, um, I have ahead. something. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, my husband just started brushing his teeth just a little loud. Um, I live over near Walnut Street School and I always feel sad when I see the American flag up on the flagpole there. You know, 4th of July, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to mention something and then I just kept forgetting, but since I see it every single day, I'm I'm just really feel sad about it. Can we replace that flag? It's tattered, it's faded. 
So is that possible? Is there money in the budget for that? Yes, it's That's possible. Really our, our facilities team handles the flags. And in fact, we have a halyard that is broken right now at Pearson, which is allowed that's uh, preventing us from actually raising the flag at Pearson. So uh, those items are being handled within the, the coming days. Okay, super. And, and it was a perfect timing because we also had somebody else ask a very similar question as well. So that is something that is on the forefront of the minds of Joe and his team, absolutely. Is there anything else to discuss in new business? Okay, so I will now move this forward to public comment on a non-agenda item. Does anybody have anything to discuss publicly about a non-agenda item? Okay. I don't see any hands up, even from community members. All right, I'm going to close the session. And I am going to ask if there is a need to go into the executive session. I did not see anything noted that there was a need to do so, but of course I wanted to, to ask the question. Okay, I do not see a need to go into executive session nor propose it. So I now um, request a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay. Thank you. All in favor or questions or comments regarding no. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. The motion carries and we got this done in under two hours. Excellent job and I appreciate everybody's effort and kindness and willingness to work together. Thank you. Have a great night. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.